Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Helen Dora Hayden. In our show this time, we'll review some recent top five Think Tech talk shows and staff pick. We'll check out the best of the best and get a handle on the issues and guests involved. Think Tech produces some 30 talk shows every week in our downtown studio. Here's a list of all our incredible Think Tech shows and hosts. As you can see, they're very diverse, and their coverage is also very diverse, showing you things you might never otherwise know about. Every week, Think Tech chooses its top five Think Tech talk shows from the week before, based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet. For this past week, the winning shows were as follows. Number one, from the series Outside In, it's called We're Off to the Med, The Doctor and the Diet, hosted by Pauline Chokmachian with guest Dr. Michaeli Carboni. It's on our Outside In playlist. Uh, can you give us some examples of some of the recipes you have on your blog that can be made very quickly without a lot of hassle so people can try it? Look, the concept is this. You arrive home, it's based on my experience. You have two kids who are, or one, uh, and a wife who want to eat and because I want to cook. And you have, what, 30 minutes at most, and then they start complaining that they're hungry. Um, that's the reality. Nobody has three hours a day to cook it. That was at the time of my grandmother, not now. So you have to have, be able to put together something that tastes good in 30 minutes with some simple ingredients, without making things so complicated like I see sometimes on these food blogs. Um, and that's all my recipes are simple, easy to make it. Every single Everybody, one, yep. Uh, well, there are a few that are a little more complicated, yep. but the majority of them are easy to do and you can do them in 30 minutes. That's the idea, the philosophy behind all of them. Now, one of the simplest Italian recipes is anything related to pasta, is that correct? Yes. So, do you have a favorite pasta yourself? You have a favorite? Look, the one that I prefer the most is, is, is my, my taste. <laughs> is the spaghetti with vongole or uh, cozze that you call it uh, mussels or clams. It's very easy to make it. It takes nothing. You take the clams, you fry some olive oil in garlic, take out the garlic from the olive oil. The Chinese leave it there. It mm. changes the flavor. Mm. As soon as it takes color, you take it out. Yes. You throw the clams in, cover, wait a couple of minutes that they open up. Throw half glass of wine, cover it, wait 30 seconds that it boils up, turn it off, take the clams out, the pasta is ready, put the, the pasta in, mix it up, add parsley and eat it. It's fantastic, it takes what? Nothing to make. How long does it take? Approximately how long? Um, if you know how to do it, it uh, uh, will take 15 minutes. If you have never done it in your life, it will take 20. Okay, so that's not a lot of time at <laughs> not all. Not a lot of time, right? So a lot of people, what they do is they go to a restaurant for pasta. Yes. And one of the problems with um, a foreign cuisine in America is that it tastes differently, number one. And then Americans tend to add ingredients that are not found in the native cuisine. So, for example, with Italian food, uh, especially with pasta, they seem to add all the US versions of it. They seem to add a lot of extra fat, a lot of extra sauces. Uh, so this is not a good idea, is it? Look, m the problem is the most people who cook in Italian restaurants should not be allowed to cook because they have no <laughs> idea what they are doing, okay? Really, um, first. Second, there is the concept, the more the better, which is not true. The basic of the Italian cuisine is that you need to taste what it is. Mm. But if you close your eyes, and you do not know if what you are eating is sword fish or chicken, there is a problem. Mm. And the problem is that they threw so much condiment on it that everything is the same and they killed it. Number two, from the series Hawaii Food and Farmer, it's called From Fields to Flying, Drone Technology for Hawaii Farms, hosted by Ted Ralston with guest Josh Levy. It's on our Hawaii Food and Farmer playlist. <laughs> Uh, I was personally down in the Philippines after the Yolanda uh, typhoon down there, and we did a lot of work down there looking at debris collection and such and, and damage structure. And uh, it somehow putting that observation point up and looking down, or look at a bleak and looking slant, gives you a whole new dimension of information you can't get standing here with five and a half foot eyes looking horizontally. Right. And you see a whole different picture. And uh, 
So without belaboring it anymore, any, anywhere from uh, man-made to natural issues, uh, mm -hmm. he goes power lines and such, mm -hmm. anything can, that can be inspected, can be inspected in generally, in general, better and at lower risk with something like these, these drones, which are also relative to people, they're d expendable. Mm -hmm. If we lose a drone, it's not, a, you know, not, not like the end of the day. Right. But if you lose a person, well, it's a whole different deal. So this so, information that you're seeing in these new landscapes and stuff, is it? are you able to look at it real time or do you have to collect it and then download it to a computer? And, or is it that real time indication of data? Both are really, are really there. Mm -hmm. uh, de de depending on the sensor package that you put on and the payload that carries that sensor package, uh, it could be for collection for post analysis, things that don't move very fast. Ag for one is uh, you, looking at it that night is probably not not bad, okay. and it saves having to transmit a lot of data down. Uh, if you're looking at, at law enforcement or fire protection, you want the information right there on a screen, or you want, in fact, relay it to somebody else on a screen because mm -hmm. you have to make decisions immediately. So what you're asking is a really interesting question. The most important thing is to know, is to understand thoroughly what the user's needs are, how mm -hmm. they intend to use the information, what type of information they want to collect, how durable it has to be, what resolution it has to be, what accuracy. And then working backwards from there, you can put together the payload package and the sensors, and then you can decide what to carry it on. Carry it on a fixed wing, carry it on a hybrid, carry it on a rotorcraft. Those decisions can be made once you understand really what the end user's needs are. Mm -hmm. So sitting down with some ag people over an, a great agricultural product, Kauai Coffee, mm -hmm. and having that discussion would be superb. And we will start that, uh, we can't do it tomorrow, but we could do it Saturday, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, you so get that bunch of people together, we'll sit down with them and talk about requirements. There you go. Number three from the series The Cyber Underground. It's called Ballistic Missile Alert. What if it was real? Hosted by Dave Stevens with guest Jay Fidel. It's on our Cyber Underground playlist. The question, and I put it to you too, is between 807 and the time you concluded it wasn't right. Yeah. Did you have thoughts about your own mortality? I didn't. And uh, because I grew up in the Cold War, and we'll discuss some of these facts, um, the first thought I thought about, and let's put up the first image right now. Uh, let's put up that. Yeah, that's what I thought was coming. Basically, a big nuclear donut uh, going to hit someplace in uh, Hawaii. and. Uh, the, the main target I knew was going to be either the city of Honolulu itself or uh, the Pearl Hickam Joint Base. So Pearl Harbor and Hickam Air Force Base, the two biggest, most populous bases uh, here uh, on the island of Oahu, just outside of downtown uh, Honolulu. And they share runway space with Honolulu International Airport. So we have military bases, international airport, and a capital city of a state, all prime targets. So since I live on the other side of the island over a 3,000 foot mountain range, the Ko'olau, uh, I did not think that I would be immediately affected by the blast. But there's a, a many more effects from a nuclear explosion than that. So let's, let's put up where we thought it was coming from. We have an image here. We thought it was coming in from North Korea. It's approximately 7,200 miles. And you can see uh, from North Korea to Hawaii, that's a hard target to hit. Now, North Korea, just so you know, North Korea has only hit basically the Sea of Japan so far. That's a much bigger target. We're a tiny little speck in the middle of the ocean. To hit us would take some significantly enhanced technology. I hope they don't have that yet. So the mainland's a better target. They can make it there. But if they need a short-range missile and we're in the way and they can hit us, that's where they're going to hit us, Pearl Harbor, Hickam. Now, let's look at the blast radius, that this is what would have happened in a, a 150 megaton blast, which is a medium-sized nuclear weapon. Yeah, and they, they go as big as 250, don't they? They go as big as 300. 300. Yeah, they have been 300. And, and, and Hiroshima handle. was 15. Right, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, much smaller, right? They measured in, uh, without the tens, were 10 times more here. And you can see right in the middle, you see uh, Pearl Harbor, and that green circle is the fire that you're going to get. Mm. Um, that outer circle is where you could still get broken windows. And the second of the outer circle is where you can still receive third degree burns if you're in an exposed area. So you can see it, it doesn't quite reach Honolulu, but where it's impacting, as you, as you know, the way this island's built, that's all of our infrastructure right there, passing from one side of the island to the next, and that's going to cut us off. Uh, in, in the meantime, 
uh, all that radiation goes straight up in the air because it's a big mushroom cloud. Most of the stuff will sink right away, but winds will carry most of the other material whatever directions the winds are blowing. Thankfully, the winds, mostly we don't have the winds that come at us, we have winds that go away from us. Number four, from the series Aging with Grace, it's called the Age Without Borders Global Summit, hosted by Jay Fidel with guest Cullen Hayashida. It's on our Aging with Grace playlist. We're looking at uh, people from, let's say, let's say about 50 to about 75 and maybe 80 that are, are, are um, pre-retirees or thinking about retiring, uh, some that are early retirees and are still very active, but oftentimes um, <clears throat> people that certainly want to live long and they want to live well, um, but oftentimes are not really clear with regards to how to do that. And so when we look at pre-retirement seminars, oftentimes it's about your, you know, Medicare and your Social Security benefit. Um, and others will talk about how important, you know, remaining physically active is. But active aging is more than just your health or your finances. There are 11 facets that are involved, you know? We have to, we have to watch our, our physical fitness and our social fitness, our medical fitness, our nutritional fitness, you know, our financial fitness. And we have to also watch our, 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 our purpose, you know, in terms of trying to clarify what it is that um, we wanna do with the rest of our life. Who are you? Yeah. Now that you are retired yeah, and without is, a job, it's a life title. and death decision. Absolutely, and you get older like that, you're facing, you know, the grim reaper. You have to decide yeah. what you want to do with your remaining we, time on the planet. Absolutely, and what good can you provide? You know, how can you remain useful? Ah, oh, that's a very interesting question. Because if you remain useful, by definition, you remain connected. If you remain connected, you know, your life is better. Your sense of awareness. You're is using better. your brain. Using still. your brain. If you right. use your brain. Your brain will last longer. I absolutely, like clear absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so this is all part of what we call active aging. You know, it's a very, it's a very. Uh, what's, what's the? Give us a little bio of yourself. I know you were in KCC for a long time. Yes, uh, doing yes. aging issues. Right, right. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> you've been involved in the conversion, if you will, of of St. Francis in the Leha into an aging facility. Talk about it. Well, yes, uh, so I, I am still a consultant with St. Francis, uh, which was once a hospital um, that now has decided that they wanted to convert the entire fa facility into a Kupuna village, you know, an elder care village that uh, dedicates itself to elder care services from institutional care to community-based care to uh, active aging exercise and wellness type of um, um, programs when you as say well. Institutionally, you mean people live there? Like Nursing people? homes. Yeah. yeah okay. And then um, uh, uh, St. Francis is also in the process of setting up a an assisted living facility mm -hmm. that people that are frail but still independent. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it's going to create an entire array of different types of services there. Number five from the series Think Tech Tech Talks. It's called A New Year for Cybersecurity with host Jay Fidel and guest Attila Ceres. It's on our Think Tech Tech Talks playlist. There's a, something called Grateful POS. Now, if you haven't heard of this, you will. It's very new. Uh, what happened is a bunch of malicious software got on point of sale systems. I'm not sure if you know this, but point of sale systems are essentially computers. And those computers are swiping credit cards, and that Grateful POS software silently made its way onto thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of point of sale systems. Still uh, uh, figuring out the numbers. Horse kind of thing. Exactly. And the worst part was that no antivirus software that was currently on the market of the top 65 antivirus softwares could find it. So what that meant is it was siphoning off credit card numbers and sending it off to a far off country to fund human trafficking, drug trafficking, organized crime, and all that stuff uh, was affecting uh, local businesses all here. throughout the United States here. and here, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, there's uh, some damage control that's uh, being done, but uh, in the coming weeks and months, we're gonna start seeing the outcome of that. Uh, you know, isn't it interesting that we have all these, these uh, hacks and uh, you know, ransomware attacks all in 2017, 
and now organized crime is stronger than ever. Third world countries are, are have the funds to uh, to build uh, weapons of mass destruction and send them our way potentially. Uh, and uh, you know who knows what well, so we're going to see this year. Third tier, tier countries too. Yeah. You know, first world countries are a people. Yeah. Well, just rewinding a little bit in the timeline, if you look back in November of 2016 when WikiLeaks uh, originally left out uh, some of these uh, some of these problems that were uh, being used, some of these exploits. Uh, a few months later, uh, we saw the WannaCry uh, ransomware attack, yeah. uh, and that WannaCry ransomware attack uh, took down uh, computers all from London to Thailand, all across the way. You know, so so big commercial uh, computer systems were held ransom. Uh, ran millions of dollars of ransomware payments went out. It's been confirmed to, to North Korea, and then six months later, North Korea has a new missile program. Wonder where they got the funding from. Oh, that's really mm -hmm. stinky. Came from them, huh? Well, it's it's confirmed. I'm not repeating anything that uh, you can't Google yourself and find out to confirm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, you can, talk, you can talk stinky about them. They've been stinky to us. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, what, what thing thing about it is you mentioned now two things that are threatening. One is this um, the one at Christmas. What was it called again? Uh, this is the grateful. 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 Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, Wanna Cry. Okay, and the, the Christmas Grateful happened at Christmas, but we haven't heard about it since. I mean, I haven't. And, and then WannaCry was a year ago, and we haven't heard much about that. Does this mean these things have been resolved? They, they say it came up on the screen, and then they went off the screen. Did somebody fix them? What happened? Well, they paid a ransom. The, the way that ransomware works is that it gets onto a computer, right? And then once it's inside that computer, it says, okay, I'm going to silently encrypt all these files. Well, we've had to physically do this for clients to remediate this problem. And once it encrypts all the files, then it says, great, would you like your files back? Yeah. If so, here's the ransom demand. Yeah. It can be anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000. The highest we've seen here locally is $105,000. Wow. They didn't pay mm -hmm. it, though. They did not, but they also did lose 12 years of data. We also have a staff pick. This time, it's from the series, What's on Your Mind, Hawaii? It's called Five Steps to Clean Up the Money in Our Politics with host Tim Apicella and guest Ed Case. It's on our What's on Your Mind Hawaii playlist. So the five points that you mentioned in an editorial of how some reforms could look like, uh -huh. um, did that come as a result of the caucus, the reformed caucus, or... Is that just kind of something you 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 believe strongly? No, I think you know we we, we all everything? we all got on the yeah. same page. We mm -hmm. all agreed. Uh, we all you know we all believe in a fairly uh, a, a common message, and we believe that there are categories that we have to deal with right. in order to in order to um, um, achieve reform. Well, let's look at uh, some so of those categories. Sure. I think the one that caught my well, they're really very basic principles, but they're very 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 the impact is very very powerful. And I think the one is everyone participates. And um, that's quite a concept. I mean, that's not happening. They're, you, we're at 15% confidence of right. the American public because right. they don't feel they have a voice. Right. So, so there's, there's, a, there's a number of principles here. Uh, everybody participates. Uh, everybody knows. Everybody plays by the same rules. Um, everybody is held accountable and everybody uh, has a voice. Those are kind of the categories and they're, they're, they're commonsensical, but to tip, tick off some of the realities uh, and what we hope to achieve in those areas, everybody participates is about, hey, you know, um, the system is being overwhelmed by big contributions. Uh, small contributions just get lost in the, in the shuffle. And is there a way that we can uh, you know, uh, give a preference, give a benefit, give a credit, give a, um, um, a, a, an incentive uh, to small donors. Because, um, you know, and again, you, you have examples from the last campaign where small donors really wrote um, a lot of the books on these, uh, so it can work. The, well, Senator Bernie Sanders' campaign really was all about sure. small, small donations. Senator Sanders fund, funded an entire <clears throat> successful, um, even though did he, you did, the, did you find that surprising, that he was that successful? I did not. Um, and that be, the reason is because of what we talked about quite mm -hmm. early, because I think that there's just a building um, you know, frustration in the country uh, by most of us uh, that's directed against the inside of the Beltway. And so um, I think that outside candidates at both the federal and the state level um, have a lot more of a chance uh, today. Uh, people will give them a lot better look. Um, so he just happened to be mm -hmm. uh, 
in, in some in the right sense, place right at the right person. time. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Senator Clinton, uh, for all her incredible achievements, was was painted as that insider. Right. And, and, that's and she had the access to a lot of these institutional dollars, if you will. Well, she she was the benefit of big right. money. That's, right. There's no question about that. Um, everybody uh, knows, to me, this is probably one of the most important parts of our package because we don't know today who is contributing the transparency money. issue the, absolutely transparency is a which critical. was overturned by citizens united versus the federal election committee right well what what has really happened here is that you know if you if you want to go back and say okay what's what's the right system here what what balances our right to lobby and our right to contribute against the 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 problems of excesses of lobbying excess of excesses mm -hmm. of contributions and what you will find pretty fast, and you know, we've already done this in McCain, Feingold, and other um, laws, is reasonable limits and full disclosure. You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on our thinktechhawaii.com homepage. And these are only samplings from the top five and staff pick from across our 30-plus weekly talk shows. There are, of course, many more. To see these shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. If you have any questions or comments about these or our other shows, please let us know. And yes, it's okay to share them with your friends and colleagues. Thanks so much for watching our shows and for supporting our efforts at ThinkTech. And now, let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or better yet, sign up on our email list to get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. More than ever, ThinkTech lives on the internet and on mobile devices. We're now streaming live on our Facebook page, and we're building an app for Apple and Android devices that will let you view our videos live and through the night, and let you search and view our 7,500 videos on demand. Stand by and we'll let you know when it's available for download. Yes, we take calls during our live shows or anytime night or day. Leave us a question or a commentary to say what's on your mind. If it's not abusive, we'll play it. You can leave your name or be anonymous. 
Speak up, speak out, speak your mind on ThinkTech and make yourself heard. Or if you would prefer, we'll call you. We want to include you and engage you in our conversations. So don't be surprised if we call to say yes, we'll be calling you live on one of our shows. Stand by for that call. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. The Atherton Family Foundation, Castle and Cook, Hawaii. The Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education. Collateral Analytics. The Cook Foundation. The Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners. Hawaii Energy. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. The Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. Hawaiian Electric Companies, the High Tech Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Integrated Security Technologies, Kamehameha Schools, Dwayne Carisu, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, the Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Okay, Elise, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Elise does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Helen Dora Hyden. And I'm Elise Anderson. Aloha, Aloha everyone. everyone.